Hey guys, um, today we are going to be solving uh, quadratic like equations. They're also known as equations of quadratic type, or as I like to call them, quadratic ish equations. The reason why I call them a quadratic ish equations or quadratic like equations is because we're going to be attacking equations that are not quite uh, quadratic equations. So remember, a uh, quadratic equation is an equation of degree 2, 2 in Espanol. All right. So a quadratic equation is uh, an equation of degree 2. None of these bad boys are equations of degree 2. But however, although they're not equations of degree 2, they do behave much like the quadratic equations. The question is, how can we tell if we have a quadratic like equation? We have a quadratic like equation if the first exponent is twice the second exponent. So for our first example, is the first exponent twice the second exponent? It sure is, because last time I checked, 6 is twice 3. Okay, yeah, you cannot see that. Remind me not to use this highlighter. Okay. Yeah, technical difficulties. Okay. So, yeah. Okay, uh, second example. Is this a quadratic like equation? I'm like, I don't know. Is the first exponent twice the second exponent? So, I'm like, is two thirds twice a third? Yeah, maybe not. But, uh, for me, it's easier just to check the middle exponent and then multiply it by 2. A third times 2, bam, 2 thirds. So we do have a quadratic like equation. Uh, a final equation. Is this a quadratic like equation? I'm like, I don't know. Is the first exponent twice the second exponent? It sure is because 4 is twice uh, 2. Okay, now the question is how do we solve quadratic like equations? So you have some options. You can either solve the equations directly, like, like you have been doing every equation, no matter how brutal it looks, or you can solve it by substitution. Okay, today we are going to focus on how to solve quadratic like equations by substitution. And um, in the description below, I'm going to put a a link where the equations are all solved directly on the test. You can solve it either directly by substitute or you can solve the uh, quadratic like equations either directly or by substitution. And I'll make sure I'll put that in the exam directions. Okay, so we have a lot of good stuff. Um, I'm going to read this to you as we as we move along. Okay, so we have our first fun problem. We're going to do three problems and they're all going to be done by substitution. Again, if you want to see a, a direct solution, uh, look at the description and I'll put the link to the solutions being worked out directly okay so the first thing i'm going to ask myself is this okay crazy problem is this a quadratic like equation so let me go ahead because you know my speech i love speaking to myself is this a quadratic like equation so i'm going to have my made up abbreviation for equation okay eqn i shouldn't have fixed that if you don't like to abbreviate then don't question is how can I tell if I have a quadratic like equation we have a quadratic like equation if the first exponent is twice the second exponent so let me ask myself is the first exponent made up abbreviation for exponent is the first exponent twice the second exponent so again, I love putting my thought process on paper because right now I'm hot, but after like uh, a few weeks later, you know, when it comes to the midterm, I will probably forget. But if I write down my thoughts, think about like, this is like a math diary. You know, we, we spill our, uh, our, juiciest our juiciest secrets or whatever I'm trying to say. Okay, so what I want to get at is this. If you speak to yourself on paper, it doesn't matter how long has lapsed. If you have... Um, your thoughts on paper then you can see your thought process okay so let's come back to the problem so is this a quadratic like equation I'm like I don't know is the first exponent twice the second exponent if you see it then yeah move on and if you don't if you're like me then let's do this so the first exponent is two-thirds so I want to know is two-thirds twice the second exponent the second exponent is one-third last time I checked product of two and one-third if you multiply across will give us two over three so to answer our question is the first exponent twice the second exponent and the answer is yes so to answer my original question do we have a quadratic like equation or an equation of quadratic type the answer is yes okay so again uh, today we are going to uh, solve all the uh, quadratic like equations by substitution and in the video description I'm going to put a link to the uh, equations being solved directly okay uh, this is like in my way so let me go ahead and write down the equation so I need a break so we have x to the two-thirds 
minus 3 times x to the 1 third less 10 is equal to 0. Okay, so we're going to do this by substitution. So I'm going to say let any variable of my choice represent whatever I want it to represent. Okay, so you can use um, any variable to represent what we're going to replace the variable part by. Okay, so we're going to pick the variable of our liking to represent the variable part of the middle term. So we're going to let some variable represent x raised to the one third. Uh, you can pick a, b, c, whatever you want, but we're going to go ahead and pick u because you don't see u that often in um, in the equations. And the if I continue to pick the same variable, then I'm going to continue to build the same train of thought. So this is why I recommend u. But if you're like, no, I'm going to pick a because that's my grade in the class, or oh, that's the one I'm going to strive for, then go for it. So again, substitution, we're going to say let u represent the variable part of the middle term, which is x to the one third. Okay, so wherever we wherever we have the x to the one third, we're going to replace it with u. Now, what about this other funny variable part, x to the two thirds? I'm going to go ahead and bust out a thinking area. Okay, so we have that u equals x to the one third. Okay, now what if we square it? Why? Because we want to. Okay, we want to get that. We want to get uh, this. Okay, x to the two thirds. So we're going to square it. Why? Because we want to. Okay, this is going to help us get uh, something uh, in terms of u for the first variable part. So if we were to square both sides, the square of u is just the square of u, or in English, u squared, and the square of x to the one third. Remember, uh, let me bust out another thinking area. For many moons ago, we had the power rule for exponents. If we had a factor and we raised it to some power, how are we going to handle it? We're going to keep the base and multiply the exponents. Okay. So when we apply the power rule on the right side, how are we going to handle it? We're going to keep the base and multiply the exponents. And the product of 2 and 1 third will give us 2 times 1 is 2. And that will give us 2 thirds. Okay. So this is pretty neat. Why? Because we have, uh, we have defined the variable for x to the one third, cool, and then we have something in terms of u for the first variable part. Okay, yeah, I said no more yellow, okay? Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and do this. Let's go ahead and make all our substitutions. So we have x to the two thirds in terms of u, that's going to give us u squared. Minus 3 times our expression for x to the one third, which we're going to substitute with u. Okay, so we say we saw this by substitution because, because we're going to substitute something for something else. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to uh, take, I'm going to temporarily ignore my original equation and focus on this new game plan. So we're going to solve u squared minus 3u minus 10. So now we're going to focus on this degree 2 equation or quadratic equation. Um, you can factor this however you like. This is how it's going to go down. So the first thing I'm going to ask myself, is the leading coefficient 1? I really hope it is because that will make the factoring a little bit less intense. In this case, it is, so let's do this. So let's go ahead, throw down parentheses. You know, how much space should we have in between them? Well, we should have enough space. Sorry. So we should have enough space to write the two binomial factors. So now the product of the first term, so let, me, let me go ahead and bust out my special effects. I printed these just for you. Okay. Yeah, I don't think that looks so nice. Okay. The product of the first term should give us u squared. And in this case, we're going to do u times itself. Okay. So now we got, we got to uh, complete the binomial factors. You guys are awesome, but I am not. So I'm going to go ahead do an x game to help me out. So we want uh, factors of c that add up to b. So let me go ahead and write this out. So let me, let me go ahead and put equals 0. So we want factors of c that add up to b. So this is a trinomial of the four. Uh, if, if the variable was x, it would be ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, so in this case, the leading coefficient is 1. That's our a. Coefficient of the middle term is negative 3. That's our b. Coefficient of the constant term, uh, or the actual constant term, sorry. Constant term is negative 10. So we want factors of c that add up to b. We want factors of negative 10 that add up to negative 3. So like in English, what two numbers multiply to negative 10? And at the same time, what are those two numbers that add up to negative 3? So using my fancy math words, factors of negative 10 that add up to 3, well, I know that you know that 5 times 2 is 10. 
So that gives us positive 10. We want a negative 10. One of these bad boys has to be negative. Because the sum is negative, then the larger factor will have to be negative. So let's check it. Uh, product of negative 5 and 2 is negative 10. Sum of negative 5 and 2 is negative 3. Okay, so we know that the factors of negative 10 that add up to negative 3 are negative 5 and 2. Cool. What are we going to do with those side numbers? We're just going to put them in, in our... Um, in, our, in the parentheses. So one side number is negative 5, so one binomial should read u minus 5. The other side number is positive 2, so the other binomial factor should give us plus 2. Okay, thank you special effects, you can go. Cool. So let's go ahead at this point, apply the zero factor properties. So the zero factor property states that if a product equals zero, then there's no way around it. One of these factors has to equal zero. Either the first factor equals zero, or the second factor equals zero. And at this point, you can handle it however you like. You can solve for you and then substitute back the expression. Or if you're like me, let's just go ahead, substitute the expression back for you. So I want to remind myself that we have that u equals x to the one third. So the reason why I choose to substitute back the expression for you is because I'm afraid that if I add 5 and subtract 2, I'm going to submit for credit that the solutions are uh, u equals 5 and u equals negative 2. But remember, the original equation, let me go ahead and zoom out. Oh, that's not good. Okay, the original equation didn't, we were not solving for you. The original equation made no reference to you. We introduced it to facilitate the, the process. So, uh... For my protection, let's substitute, let's substitute back the expression for you. Okay, so we have u, which said represents uh, x to the one-third. Then we bring down the rest of the problem. Our second equation, we have u, which is given by x to the one-third, and then plus 2. Okay, so we are asked to solve this equation. The variable is x, so let's go ahead and solve for x. So if you're not with the x, you got to go. Let's go ahead and add 5 to both sides. And then that will give us x to the 1 third equals 5. Okay, depend, oh yeah, you cannot see that. Sorry, I have to look at my screen. Okay, I forget that just because I can see it doesn't mean that you can too. Okay, so at this point, you are going to solve for x however your heart desires. Okay, there's two different ways to go about it. But in the to make a clean solution, we're only going to do it one way. With your permission, because we have a rational exponent, to facilitate what is the next step, we're going to write this out using a radical. Okay, so if the index is 3, then that means we have, sorry, if the denominator is 3, then that means that the index is 3. So that will give us cube root of whatever we're left with. Uh, that will give us cube root of whatever we're left with. And in this case, it will give us cube root of x to the first. So you don't need to write the exponent of 1. But the reason why I write it is because I don't want, I, I want to remind myself that I didn't ignore the numerator. If you just want to put cube root of x, go for it. I'm cool with that. Okay. So let's go ahead and bring down the rest of the equation. Finish this off before we look at the other one. Okay. So cube root of x, to undo the cube root, we're going to go ahead and use the power rule and raise both sides to the third power. Okay, So we're going to go ahead cube root, uh, raise both sides to the third power. The exponent of 3 and the index of 3 undo each other. Oh yeah, blooper time. Okay, Exponent of 3 and index of 3 undo each other. And that will leave us with the radicand of just x. Okay, so that will leave us with x, whatever the cube of 5 is, that's the answer. I punch it in, and that will give us 125. Okay, so one equation down, one more to go, and it's going to be the same speech. Okay, to isolate the variable term, let's go ahead and subtract 2 from both sides. And that will leave us with x to the 1 third equals negative 2. And again, you can solve this however you like, but for me, it's easier to write it in um, radical form. Because the denominator is 3, then that means that when we put it in radical form, that's going to give us an index of 3. So that will, give, that will leave us with cube root of whatever we're left with, which is x to the first power or just x, depending on how you see things. Okay. Now, our next goal is to get rid of the radical. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and use the power rule. Okay. So to undo the index of 3, let's go ahead and raise both sides to the power of 3. 
On the left side, uh, the exponent of 3 and index of 3 undo each other, and that will leave us with the radicand of x. Punch it in the calculator or freehand it, the cube the cube of negative 2, who speaks like that? Negative 2 to the third power will give us negative 8. Now, our original problem was not a radical equation, okay? So we have something funny like this. But bear in mind that uh, when our exponents are fractions or rational numbers, we have like hidden radicals. So we always have to check our answers, maybe, okay? In this case, uh, the index is 3, so um, actually, no, let's go ahead and check it. I'm gonna, I don't want you to memorize so many things, okay? So when it comes to solving radical equations, we have to check it. So let's go ahead and check our answers. So we're going to check x equals 125, and to do that, we're going to plug it into our calculator. Okay, well, uh, let's go ahead and write the equation. Not the revised ones, the original one. Where am I? Here I am. Okay. So we have x to the 2 thirds minus 3 times x to the 1 third minus 10 equals 0. Okay. So you have some options. For the overachievers, uh, you, you know, you check it by hand, plug it in. But you know what? We're, we're going to take advantage of our fancy uh, graphing calculator. Okay. What if you don't have easy access to your graphing calculator? Then just go ahead. Um, Oh, sorry. I was trying to play with the light. Okay. Oh, this is terrible. Okay, let me turn this off. They remind me to edit the video later. Okay, I think that's good. Okay, cool. So, uh, if you don't have uh, immediate access to a graphing calculator, then just use a regular calculator or freehanded. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and use my calculator. So, if we were going to freehand it, we would substitute 125 for x, but we're going to let the calculator do that for us. Okay, so let's go ahead and plug it in. We have 125, and we're going to store it as x. Okay, so remember, uh, how do we save it? Let me go ahead and take out my uh, my, ¿cómo se dice? my special effect, and we're going to hit this uh, store button. So, S-T-O. So, we're going to go ahead and punch it, and then we want to save it as x. Okay. Cool. All right, and then we hit enter, and then we have told our calculator that look, x equals 125. If you don't trust yourself, then you know enter x equals, and then you get that 125. So let's go ahead uh, see what we get when we substitute a 125 for x. Let's tell the calculator. So we have x raised to where is that exponent button? So remember, it's um that caret button, the one that's above the division sign, raised to the two thirds. Okay, so I don't use the fraction button, so I, I really don't know where it is on the on the graphing calculator. So I will enter all the fractions as division problems. So raised to the two thirds. So we're gonna put two divided by three, and then I'm gonna use the side arrow because I want to get out of the exponent. Okay, minus three times x, where x is raised to the one third. So exponent key. 1 divided by 3, get out of the exponent zone, and then minus 10, and then we're going to hit equals to see uh, what we would get um, if we were to evaluate it by hand. Okay, so the left side gives us 0, right side equals 0, so we know that 125 is a solution. Now, just because our, our first answer checked out, it doesn't mean that our second answer checked out. So let's go ahead and check the other answer, which was, where, I, where were we? Negative 8. So let's go ahead check the second solution. So again, you can check it by hand because uh, you know the overachiever in you just wants to do everything by hand, uh, or you can use the calculator. So we're gonna do it the same same way around. So we're gonna store negative eight for x. So we're gonna put negative eight and then store it. Remember, it's special effect. Okay. So we're gonna save it as or store it as x. Cool. And then we hit enter, and if you don't trust yourself, you can enter x again, and then confirm that you saved it as uh, x, okay? So we have x to the two-thirds, so we have x raised to the two-thirds. Again, if you're free-handed, then you will write negative 8 raised to the two-thirds. Get out of exponent zone, minus 3 times x raised to the uh, one-third, 1 over 3. Get out of exponent zone, minus 10. Okay, so again, do it by hand if you want to. I just want to go, okay? So when we punch it in or we do it by hand, we get that the left side simplifies to zero and the right side is zero, okay? So both solutions checked out, so we're good.
So we have that our proposed solutions were 125 and negative 8. Let's go ahead and write them as a combined statement. Okay, so we have 125 comma negative 8. If you look in the back of the book, they will put the solutions in order, but I don't really care. Okay, so again, we're going to do a total of three problems. This was our first one. We have two more. Okay, let me go ahead and do this. Hopefully the video doesn't cut out. Okay, so... We are asked to solve this bad boy. So again, um, this is a funny looking problem. So I want to know, is this a quadratic like equation? So same speech. Is this a quadratic like equation? Okay, if you see it, great. But you know me, I never do. So I'm going to ask myself, is the first exponent, is the first exponent twice the second exponent okay is the first exponent twice the second exponent so the first exponent is one half so i want to know is one half twice the second exponent which is uh one fourth product of two and a fourth last time i checked gives us one half so to answer the question is this a quadratic like equation is the first exponent twice the second exponent well as you can see the first exponent is twice the second exponent so to answer our question is this a quadratic like equation yes okay so today we are going to focus our energy on solving these quadratic like equations by substitution but if you want a direct solution then then go to the description and click on the video link okay so uh, I need a little break so we have x to the one half minus x to the one fourth e uh, less six equals zero okay so let's go ahead uh substitute the variable part for any variable of my liking I give you my my speech why we use you not why we use I give you my speech why I'm gonna use you why I am going to use you. Okay, I'm having a tough time speaking today. That's not good. So we're going to say let u represent the variable part of the middle term. We also want to write an expression for the first variable part in terms of the same variable. We don't have to define it because we're not introducing a different variable. So let me go ahead do my thinking area on the side. If u equals x to the one fourth, what would happen if we were to square both sides okay so if we were to square both sides okay so when we square both sides that will give us u squared equals and remember power rule raising powers we're going to keep the base and multiply the exponents okay so product of two and one fourth will give us uh, one half so we have u squared equals x to the one half why am, why am i having a moment why am i feeling giddy because that's the same thing that we have to start with so we're gonna have expressions for all these funny things in terms of u so let's do this so we have x to the one half well that's going to be replaced with u well u squared minus x to the one fourth which we're swapping out with u so again we we say we're going to solve this by substitution we're because we are substituting something for something else. Let's bring down the rest of the problem. Minus six is equal to zero. Okay, fantastic. So we have a trinomial. You can factor it however you like. I don't really care, okay? So let's do this. We have a trinomial. I'm always gonna ask myself, I'm crossing my fingers, is the leading coefficient one? And in this case, it is. So I'm jumping for joy. Pretend you can see me jumping. Or maybe don't. Okay. So let's go ahead, throw down parentheses, and focus on getting the product of the first terms. I'm going to, I put my uh, my special effect on the side because I lost them. Okay. So product of the first term should give us u squared. And in this case, it's going to be u times itself. To complete the binomial factors, we want factors of c that add up to b. Do you need to show the x game for credit? Absolutely not. But um, again, I'm the type of person that, that loves writing. So if I write my thought process, then I'm good to go. This is a trinomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So the value of a is 1. Value of b is negative 1. 
and value of c is negative 6. Okay, so to complete the binomial factors, we want factors of negative 6 that add up to 1. Or in English, find two numbers that multiply to negative 6 and at the same time add up to 1. So in this case, it's going to be, uh, I think it's like 2 and 3, where the larger factor will have to be negative. But before I, I punch it in, let's go ahead and check it. Product is negative 6, sum is negative 1, so we're good. So let's go ahead and use these side numbers to complete our binomial factors. One side number is 2, so one binomial factor should read u plus 2. Another uh, side number is negative 3, so the other binomial factor sh should equal negative 3. And a reminder, it's okay uh, if you put the u minus 3 and then u plus 2. Multiplication is commutative, so the order doesn't matter. Bringing down the rest of the problem, that will give us zero. Okay, so uh, when we solve quadratic equations by factoring, the toughest part is to factor. We did it. So now let's go ahead and apply the zero factor property. So remember, the zero factor property states that if a product equals zero, then there's no way around it. One of these factors will have to equal zero. Either the first factor equals zero or the second factor equals zero. Okay, so uh, you can solve for you now, or you can, or uh, you can solve for you now and then substitute later, or you can substitute now and then uh, solve for it later. I give you my reasons why I substitute right now. So let me remind myself: we had said that u equals x to the one fourth. So let's go ahead replace all those u's with the expression of x to the one fourth. So we have u, which is given by uh, x to the one fourth. Bring down the rest of the problem, plus 2 equals 0. And then we have or u, which is x to the 1 fourth. Bringing down the rest of the equation, uh, minus 3 equals 0. Okay, something that I want to point out is this. Whenever you have rational exponent, that is called for hidden radicals. So we are definitely going to have to check our answers to uh, eliminate extraneous solutions. So let's do this. To isolate the variable part, or uh, to get rid of a plus 2, uh, inverse operation, or in English, opposite operation is minus. So let's go ahead, subtract, and that will leave us with x to the 1 fourth equals negative 2. Fantastic. So now, if you're like, I'm a genius, I just know what to do to isolate the x, go for it. But you know the speech, since you're not going to take the test from me, I need to write what I can digest. Whenever we have a rational exponent, that is called for hidden radical. Since the denominator is 4, that means that we're going to have index of 4. So let's go ahead and do this. So that will leave us with the fourth root of whatever we're left with. And when we cover up our denominator, that will give us x to the first. So I'm going to put x to the first. You don't need the exponent of 1. I gave you my speech why I put it. Because if I don't, I feel like I'm going to just ignore the numerators. Okay, so that should equal negative 2. At this point, handle it. To undo the index of 4, we're going to go ahead and use the power rule and raise both sides to the fourth power. So after we, after we raise both sides to the fourth power, exponent of 4, index of 4, hopefully I said that correctly, exponent of 4, index of 4, they cancel out or they undo each other and that will leave us just with the radicand of x. Someone put the calculator, punch it in for me. Negative 2 to the 4th power is 16. I know we nailed our algebra, but again, because we have a we have a hidden radical equation, then we have to check our proposed solutions. We're not, we're not overachievers. We're not going to check it by hand. We're going to use our calculator. Okay, one equation down, one more to go. Let's go ahead, isolate the variable term. Let's go ahead, add 3 to both sides. And that will leave us with x to the 1 fourth is equal to 3. Okay, and same speech. It's very difficult for me to isolate the x from right here. So with your permission, we're going to go ahead and write it in radical form. Whenever we have a rational exponent, that is called for hidden radical. Since the denominator in the exponent is 4, that means that we're going to have index of 4. So that will leave us with fourth root of whatever we're left with. And in this case, it will be x to the first power or just x. Same difference. To finish it off, to get rid of the index of 4, let's go ahead and apply the power rule and raise both sides to the fourth power. When we do the exponent of 4 and index of 4 undo each other, 
And that will leave us with the radicant of X. Fantastic. Someone with the calculator, you know the speech. 3 to the 4th power is 81. I think. Hopefully I did it right because I don't want to do this video again. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this. So, again, our original problem, where were we? Okay, something like this. Okay, we have rational exponents, so that's code for hidden radicals. And when it comes to solving a radical equation, checking is not optional. You have to check your answers to eliminate extraneous solutions. But uh, it doesn't take that long to check, especially if you're using a calculator. Okay, so we have CK. We're going to check uh, the first answer, which, six, which is 16. And the original problem was uh, X to the 1 half minus X to the 1 fourth less 6 is equal to 0. If you're going to check it by hand, you know the drill. Substitute a 16 for x and make sure that the left side simplifies to the right side. But we're going to use our calculator, so let's do this. So I'm going to go ahead clear this from our earlier problem, and we want to save 16 as x. So we're going to say, uh, we're, we're going to write 16, store it as, you know the button, oh, where's my special calculator, okay? We're going to hit the store button, so we're going to save it as x. Then we hit enter, and if you don't trust yourself, because I don't know why you would, you hit X again, and then you confirm, like, oh, yeah, the calculator safely stored X uh, 16 for X, okay? So let's punch it in. So we have X to the 1 half, or if you do it by hand, 16 to the 1 half, get out of exponent zone, minus X to the 1 fourth, get out of exponent zone, minus 6. Okay, for my sanity, it needs to check out, else we're going to have a situation. Okay, so when we punch it in or free-handed, <gasps> we have negative 4, and I hate it when it doesn't check out. Under normal circumstances, I would be like, dog breath, because I'm trying to uh, not say bad words anymore. I would say, dog breath, it didn't check out, so... Uh, I must have done something wrong. But remember, whenever we have radical equation and it doesn't check out, one or two options, we probably got it wrong, but we're not going to think negative. We're going to trust our algebra. But when we solve a radical equation and it doesn't check out, that just means it's an extraneous solution. So a reminder, an extraneous solution is a solution of one of the new equations, but not of the original equation. So like in this case, uh, where am I? 16 could be a solution of this uh, new equation, but not the original equation. So I'm going to go ahead, box, uh, not box, I'm going to go ahead, cross this out for dramatic effect. You don't have to cross it out, but I know myself, if I don't cross it out, then I'm going to box it because I get nervous. So 16 is not a solution. Just because 16 is not a solution, it doesn't mean that 81 has to be or 81 doesn't have to be. So let's go ahead, check it um, using our calculator or you're freehanded on your own. So we have 81 and then same speech, go ahead, save it or store it. Okay, so STO button, store it as X. And if you want to check it and you enter X again, and then you can confirm that the calculator has saved 81 for X. Okay, so uh, I always like to write the equation over. Uh, CK, we're checking 81. I like to check, uh, I like to write it out because uh, if I were to check it by hand, it kind of ensures that I put the numbers in the right place. Okay, so we have x to the 1 half, get out of exponent zone, minus, not minus, uh, that minus x to the 1 fourth get out of exponent zone, minus 6. For my own sanity, I need the left side to equal the right side, so I need this to equal 6, okay? Calculator gives us 6. If we had done this by hand, we would have gotten 6. So left side equals 6, right side equals 6. That means that 81 is a solution. So we had two possible answers. One couldn't fly. I got to watch out with my fingers because I love my job. We have two possible answers. One couldn't fly. Since we have something to go by, please don't put no solution. We put no solution when we have nothing to go by. But in this case, we have one answer. Cool. Okay, guys. So I know you're tired. Me too. Okay. So I said we were going to do... Um, let me see, I, I said we were going to do three problems. This was our second problem. Let's go ahead and do our third and final problem so we can be out. Okay. Uh, so we have this last problem. So we are asked to solve it. So this is not a quadratic equation, okay? It's not a degree two equation, okay? But I want to know, is this a quadratic-like equation? Does it, behave like quadratic, does it behave like a quadratic equation? 
so quadratic like equation so I'm like I don't know is the first exponent twice the second exponent and the answer is yes negative 2 is in fact twice the second exponent cool so we have verified that it's a quadratic like equation so you have some options you can solve it directly or by substitution today we're going to focus on solving uh the quadratic like equations by substitution but in the video description you can um click on the link and see a direct solution it's really up to you so we have six times x to the negative second minus five times x to the negative first less six equals zero when we solve a uh, quadratic like equations or equations of quadratic type by substitution we're always going to say let some variable represent the variable part of the middle term okay which is x to the negative first power okay so let some variable i'm going to say u okay, or whatever your favorite letter is let some variable represent the variable part of the middle term cool so we uh, are going to be able to substitute x to the negative first for the variable u but what about x to the negative second we want like the first term to be of degree term of, we want the first term to be of degree two so let me go ahead bust out a thinking area so we have say let u equal x to the negative first power what were to happen if we were to square both sides okay uh, the reason why we square is because we want this u squared. We want this degree 2. If we were to square both sides, let's go ahead and apply the power rule. Power rule. Raising powers. We're going to keep the base and multiply the exponents. So we have x to the negative first, which we will swap out or substitute with u. We have x to the negative second, which we will swap out for u squared. So everything is going to be in terms of u. Fantastic. So we have 6 times x to the negative second which we will substitute with u squared minus 5 times x to the negative first which we will substitute with u less 6 is equal to 0 cool all right now we do have a degree 2 equation okay so we have quadratic equation unfortunately the leading coefficient is not 1 so it's I'm not going to go straight to throwing down parentheses you can factor however you like. Uh, so a lot of you are really good uh, with the guess and check or trial and error, but I am terrible with that. I'm a terrible guesser, okay? So what we're going to do together, we are going to factor it by using the AC method, okay? Okay, so a friendly reminder, the gist of the AC method is to split the middle term into two terms. So then you can have four terms and factor by grouping. Okay, so we're going to keep the uh, ends as is, the first term and the last term as is. We're going to split the middle term. So this is a trinomial, uh, ignoring the u, this is, tri this is a trinomial of the form ax squared plus bx plus c. So the leading coefficient is our a, coefficient of the middle term is c last term or uh, constant term is negative 6 so let's go ahead do the x game okay so for the <coughs> sorry so the corresponding x game we want factors of a c that add up to b product of a and c namely 6 and negative 6 will give us negative 36 value of b is negative 5 so remember uh, multiplication is commutative so we can switch the sides addition is also commutative so we can switch the sides i cannot read your mind but this is how i'm going to do it factors of negative 36 that add up to negative 5 we're going to have 9 and 4 product is negative pro sorry my product right now is 36 we need to we need <laughs> we need to fix it so it's negative 36 Sorry, I need a drink of water because I love my job. Okay, so right now my product is positive. We need the product to be negative. Sum is negative, so the larger factor needs to be negative. Now, the question that I get, what if I put 4 and negative 9? It's okay, you can switch the sides. Okay, so again, the, the gist of the AC method is to split the middle term into 4 is to split the middle term so then we can have four terms and then factor by grouping so when we split the middle term we're going to use the sides as the coefficient when split so in english attach the variable part to those sides 
So it's going to be nine, nine, negative 9u and positive 4u. So let's do this. So we are going to replace the negative 5u with negative 9u and positive 4u. Or you can, you, if you switch the sides, then you put them in your order. Minus 9u plus 4u, and then we bring down the rest of the problem. Okay, so let's go ahead, apply our skills from our earlier unit. Now that we have four terms, let's go ahead, factor by grouping. When we group the first two and group the last two, we take out the GCF and we shouldn't have any issues. So let's go ahead and do this. Looking at the first team only, uh, 6u squared and 9u have a common factor of 3u. And when we factor it out, that will leave us with 2u minus 3. If you're having a moment, check it right now. 3u times 2u gives us 6u squared. 3u times negative 9 will give us negative 9u. So check. So one group down, one more group to go. Okay. Looking at the second team, 4u and 6 have a common factor of 2. So let's go ahead and factor out the 2. When we do, 4u divided by 2 will give us 2u. Negative 6 divided by 2 will give us negative 3. And then we bring down the rest of the problem. Okay, so again, gist of the AC method is to split the middle term. So you can have four terms and then factor by grouping. So at this point, it is no surprise that the binomial factors, that the binomials uh, are the same. They, they should be. Let's go ahead, factor out the, bino the common binomial from the expression. I don't know why I'm so tongue-tied today. Okay, when we factor it out, let's show the world what we're left with. First product divided by GCF, the binomials cancel out, and that will leave us with 3u. Second product divided by GCF, the binomials cancel out, and that will leave us with plus 2. Fantastic. So again, when we're solving a degree 2 equation or quadratic equation by factoring, Factoring is the toughest part. Once once you have successfully factored, you're pretty much good. So moving forward, uh, once we factor, we're going to go ahead and apply the zero factor property. So if a product equals zero, then one of these factors has to equal zero. Either the first factor equals zero or the second factor equals zero. So at this point, so you have some options. You can solve for u and then make the substitution later, or you can uh, substitute now and then solve for the variable. It's a personal choice. I gave you my speech uh, why I substitute now. So we had said earlier that u equals x to the negative first. So let's go ahead and substitute back the expressions for u. So we have 2 times expression for u, which is x to the negative first minus 3 equals 0, or 3 times expression for u, which is x to the negative first, plus 2 equals 0. At this point, you solve for x however you like. Okay, it's really a personal choice. These negative exponents scare me, so I want to fix it so they're all positive. So I'm going to go ahead and apply the negative exponent rule. To, expo to make the exponent positive, we're going to move the factor about the other side of the fraction bar. No fraction bar, no problem. Make one up. Okay, so we're, we're going to move the factor of x to the other side, and that will leave us with 2. The x has to go to the other side, and anytime we move a factor to the other side of the fraction bar, we're going to switch out the exponent. So we're going from negative 1 to positive 1. Let's bring down the rest of the equation minus 3 equals 0 okay do what you gotta do okay we cannot read each other's minds but uh, as long as you apply all those properties correctly we're good i want to isolate this fraction so let's go ahead add three to both sides to undo the subtraction by three let's go ahead add it to both sides and that will leave us with sorry i'm running out of space that will leave us with 2 over x equals 3 okay you handle it however you like for me i need the x on top uh yeah, I didn't leave it on top because it was being raised to a negative power. But to undo the division by x, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by x. Am I having a moment? Yeah, uh, I can multiply both sides by the variable, but you can never divide both sides by the variable you're solving for because you'll lose the zero solution. Okay, I've said too much. 
after we multiply both sides by x, the x's cancel out on the left, and that will leave us with 2 is equal to product of 3 and x is x. For the grand finale, I can see the end of this lecture. To get rid of times 3, let's go ahead and divide both sides by 3, and that will leave us with x equals 2 thirds. So one solution down, one more to go. How are we going to solve the other equation? Same exact way, because it's a setup similar in the same format. Okay, so uh, second equation, we have 3 times x to the negative first plus 2 equals 0. This negative exponent scares me, so what do I do? I face my fears. Let's make it positive. To make the exponent positive, you're going to move that factor about the other side of the fraction bar. If there isn't one, make one up. Okay, so that will leave us with 3. The x got booted out. Let's bring it to the bottom, and then we'll switch out the exponent. Plus 2 equals 0. Fantastic. To isolate this fraction, to undo the addition by 2, let's go ahead and subtract both sides by 2. And that will leave us with 3 over x equals negative 2. Handle it however you like. To undo the division by 2, to undo the division by x, let's go ahead and multiply both sides by x. And that will leave us with, on the left side, the x's cancel out. And that will leave us with 3 is equal to negative 2x. Okay? To finish it off, to get rid of the times negative 2, let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 2. And that will leave us with, where am I? x equals negative 3 halves. Now, the overachiever that you are, you're like, oh, we checked the first two problems. Let's check this one. I mean, you could if you want, but... Check it out. Let's go ahead and look at the original problem that we had with. Yeah, we had funny exponents, but they were not fractions, okay? So if the exponents are not fractions, then we don't have a hidden radical equation. So checking is not like a must. I mean, you check it because, you know, you want to make sure you got it right. But you can check it at your house. So let's go ahead and write our answer using a combined statement. So we have x equals 2 thirds. And another one is 3 halves. Uh, please don't, don't box your answers separately. It just makes it tougher. Um, but if I wanted to tell you the real reason, remember, or means union. So we have to take the union of our answers. Okay, guys. So I said we were going to do three problems. This is our third problem. And I think we're good. Thanks.